After a relatively painless border crossing in Maine, I headed into the Canadian province of Quebec. The inhabitants of this area have diligently hung on to their French roots and little English is spoken outside of the major cities. My first objective was finding a place to obtain Canadian currency so that I could then acquire gas and replenish my supply of rotisserie chicken. Additionally, I needed to plug into a Wi-Fi connection for long enough to download maps of the area. As I headed north, heavy pellets of rain began to hammer the road, the bike, and the rider. Desperate for a spot to throw up my tarp and make camp, I made the poor decision to follow a steep, muddy logging road downhill for several miles. I really don't know what compelled me to take this road under these conditions, especially fully loaded up, and furthermore, why I continued to follow the road to the bottom. There was nowhere decent at all to make camp, and the only way back was up the steep, muddy hill. Riding down here fully loaded had been a mistake, and I was putting a serious amount of strain on my clutch to keep from sliding around. When I reached the top of the hill, all of a sudden I had no slack in my clutch lever, and after making an adjustment, I crossed my fingers and rode on. For about the next two hours, I searched high and low for a spot. With more rain on the weather forecast, anywhere I stayed had to be somewhere I could get in and out of in case of flooding. Eventually I noticed a level spot between some trees, just big enough to squeeze my bike through. For the next two days, it rained without pause. Luckily I could squeeze my bike into this little cove. I think I halfway burned out my clutch yesterday on those uh, steep, muddy roads. It's uh, nothing but solid rain uh, coming my way, so uh, I'm almost out of water. All right, so I have to be uh, a little bit careful about conserving water. And uh, I noticed that uh, water has a tendency of pooling on this tarp. So uh, if I can, uh, I'll go ahead and do it. And in fact, I could probably set this tarp up uh, so I could collect a more significant amount of rainwater, but Anyway, I might do that later if it comes down to it. Ah. Kind of a Canadian institution. Uh, this is Tim Hortons. If you've ever seen shows like the Trailer Park Boys, uh, you've probably seen Tim Hortons. So uh, this is my first time. I'm excited. Let's go check it out. Bonjour. Merci. Bonjour. 
Bonjour. Euh, je voudrais un café au lait. Un café latte. Hein? Okay, like that? Large? Large. Yes. It's good. I must look an absolute mess. I've been uh, uh, stuck in the woods, uh, wet, cold, miserable uh, for the last two days, so. Here I am, so anyway. Damn. Man, this river is overflowing. I was really meticulous about finding a place uh, that didn't look like it would get too flooded. So hopefully this rain's gonna die down and uh, I can head to Quebec City. Next week they're calling for like 87 degree days. So that's just crazy uh, weather for you. These uh, uh, Quebecois uh, grocery stores are a little different than the ones in the United States. That is a very attractive strawberry display. With an exchange rate of about 80 US cents to one Canadian dollar, the country is a cost-effective option for Americans wanting to travel abroad. Other than that, I mean, it's a lot similar to a lot of grocery stores in the United States. You got your produce section, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But it's just little details. And obviously this is what I'm after, which is a, uh, uh, rotisserie chicken, what they call uh, in French, uh, poulet or barbecue chicken. Poulet barbecue. That's a Portuguese chicken. I don't know what uh, the difference is, but uh, it's more expensive, so I'm not getting that. All kinds of delicious looking pre-made meals and stuff like that. This is c'est uh, prêt, which means it's ready. I'm uh, still learning French, but this is what I'm after because uh, I noticed the other day when I was in the grocery store, a lot of the fromage uh, here is uh, a hell of a lot cheaper than it is in the United States for good quality cheese. Ooh, that looks good. That's not bad. Having lived like a dirty motorcycle vagabond for the past couple days, I used the break-in weather to find a gym in which to lift weights and shower, and then set out to explore the town.
The sun was shining the next morning as I packed up and headed to Quebec City. Before heading into the city, the first order of business would be finding suitable lodgings for the night. I rode my bike partway down a snowmobiling route and began exploring on foot. All right, well, looks like I got a good spot right here. I kind of cleared out some of the undergrowth and everything else. Probably put my bike right there. That way I can access my tour pack and uh, saddlebags. But uh, this is pretty fucking remote uh, and yet also pretty close to Quebec City. So now that I've gotten this kind of squared away and figured out my lodgings for the night, uh, I'm going to go ahead over to Quebec City and uh, see what's going on over there. At first glance, that really looks real. One of the oldest European settlements in North America Quebec City is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and as such is in a perpetual state of repair. It's one of the most beautiful cities of the world and a hell of a lot cheaper than most places in the U.S. It is, quite frankly, one of the coolest places I've been in a really long time. There are people from all over the world out here. You hear all kinds of different accents and languages uh, being spoken. Boy, oh boy. This place will kill you. That looks like fun. Gotta wait for the snow on that one. So I'm just walking around, not really any purpose in mind. This is a uh, a really cool city. It's a place that I knew I was going to like and uh, a lot cheaper than a lot of big cities in the U.S. that's for sure.
Having lived almost exclusively on rotisserie chickens for the past couple months and lost a couple of two or three pant sizes, it was high time to try some local specialties. Here I had the traditional French onion soup with a piece of bread on top and grated cheese, and it was like a taste of France. I also tried the Canadian specialty poutine, which is fresh cut fries, pork belly, and cheese curd smothered in gravy. I can uh, feel myself getting fatter by the second, but uh, you know, I guess that's how they stay warm up here. Uh, you gotta stay well insulated, you know? So, uh, when in Rome, as they say, Wow, that is cool. Looks like somebody carved a ski do out of a solid chunk of granite. That's going to be kind of an interesting concept. I guess, you know, you get a couple of people. Oh, it's got pedals. There's another uh, creative rock sculpture. I'm guessing probably done by the same guy that did the ski do. Of course, that's kind of taking the easy way out. Just find a boulder and stick some handlebars and some wheels on it. There's the town of uh, Levy, kind of where we just came from. And uh, the place where I was camping is way over there. About a 30 minute ride to get here. I'm just getting the most out of it. Today will probably be the only day that I'm here. Just kind of hanging out and uh, doing some filming. <laughs> this is uh, an experience you only get really from uh, being in the cities. Uh, you just find a nice shady spot and just uh, relax and watch what's going on. This uh, inside there is the Citadel. Man, I wouldn't want to have to mow the side of that bank right there. I mean, one misstep and you're in trouble. But uh, apparently you can pay money. You can actually drive your car uh, in there. I think they've got like parking spaces and stuff. Quebec City looks like it was pretty heavily fortified. the very tip top of that crazy house but look at all these windows up there i mean and you think about the whole thing that place must have hundreds of rooms that is worth the picture right there
All right, got my cozy little uh, camp back in here. Got the thermocell rocking, that thing works great. Uh, only downside is it takes about 15 minutes to really start to be effective. So I usually uh, get a mosquito coil going first. So I got this uh, lasagna at the grocery store, some Kalamata olive bread, uh, a piece of carrot cake, and some of my Canadian maple syrup uh, that I picked up somewhere. So I'm gonna try the maple syrup on the carrot cake, which I don't see why that wouldn't be good. Uh, a little bit of water. So really, I don't know if it gets any better than this. Uh, man cannot live on rotisserie chickens alone. And, uh, and every once in a while for my own sanity, uh, I have to mix it up and uh, eat some of the food that I really like. Not that there's anything wrong with rotisserie chickens. I mean, uh, it's been really effective at taking the weight off, I'll tell you that. I mean, it's, it's essentially kind of a carnivore diet. I don't know exactly how much weight I've lost, but I'm almost at the point where I'm gonna need to make another hole in my belt, so I'd say it's pretty effective. Well, I tried that maple syrup uh, on the carrot cake and uh, really couldn't taste it. So, uh, you know, really I think the best way to uh, capture the nuances of the flavor is just to do it straight, you know? I mean, just, just straight out of the bottle. You need to uh, drink maple syrup if you come to Quebec or Canada because you need to have the blood of the earth uh, running through your veins uh, as you ride, you know, the roads. You need to have the blood of the trees and everything else. So, you know, why not? The knowledge that I was still a good 2,000 miles away from Sturgis wasn't lost on me, and with a few weeks left before starting work, I took advantage of the good weather to put down as many miles as possible. Just on the edge of the Ontario border, I found a town park which allowed free tent camping for a maximum stay of three days. Nothing like free tent camping. My uh, allergies are going crazy. I've been riding all day, ever since uh, early this morning. So I'm uh, about ready to sit down, read a book, uh, and get ready to pass out. For the next couple days, I rested up and explored the town. Being as it was right next to Ontario, most of the folks here were speaking in English. All right, so just hanging out under my uh, little spot under the, what would you call it, an elm tree uh, based on the leaves, but this has been uh, a pretty good spot. This guy just came out. And uh, I saw him come in. I'm like, he can't be moto camping. 
<laughs> but he is, you know. And and what's your name? Hi, my name is Etienne. Etienne, and where are you from? Quebec City. Quebec City. Oh, right. I just came from Quebec City. You, really? Yeah. It was cool. a long ride. Yeah. <laughs> and so you did you leave today? I leave this morning. Yeah. This at okay. Eight thirty. That's a pretty good ride. Yeah, if it's five hundred kilometers. Yeah, five hundred kilometers. So. That's like 320 miles, yeah. something like that. Right. Yeah, yeah. So that's, but trust me, it was a long ride. Yeah. I was, my butt is sore. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. You know, day before yesterday, I was out there exploring the town Great. and taking videos of uh, the, what is it, Chateau, uh, right. Chateau Fontenac. Fontenac. That oh, is crazy, cool. man. I looked it up. It's like 600 and something rooms. It's an expensive uh, place to live. Yeah, I looked that up too. It's like four hundred dollars a night. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, it's much cheaper uh, to camp here. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. This place is totally free for tents. Yeah. So, so which bike is this? Yeah, that's a K KTM Duke, seven ninety. Right. It's a uh, two thousand nineteen. Okay. So it's uh, out of the uh, Matigolfen in uh, Austria mm -hmm. plant. Okay. So it's a genuine Austrian bike. <laughs> genuine Austrian KTM. Right. Yeah, I've been riding it since uh, 2020, and uh, now I'm about uh, 2300 uh, 20, uh, kilometers on it. So, you know, it's been a long... Okay, so... Yeah, I'm driving... Uh, got it broken in pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. I like it. No problems at all. Some... Uh, minor leakage but mm. uh, well that's normal yeah if, if it's like seepage you mean like from yeah from the head so okay yeah, yeah that's that's normal stuff as long as there's not like a pool of oil under your bike no and yeah. you're not killing the grass and <laughs> <laughs> everything dies you know yeah. it's yeah. a great bike cool cool it's Excellent. not a touring bike <laughs> but i see know. that yeah yeah well hey you're yeah. you're preaching to the choir well as you prends le français Oh, uh, wow. it's it's I, <laughs> I uh, that's about all I know how to say, unfortunately. <laughs> Even though I have been studying, I know the numbers, you know, uh, do trois quatre. But uh, no, so I just had a good time uh, in Quebec City because I would just in the city itself, most people speak English, but I would always try to speak French with everybody and no, be stupid. Appreciate. And they, yeah, they just that, I made so many friends there, man, just from trying to speak the language. And butchering it. Like, I would say it. I know this is totally wrong, but they're like, thank you so much for trying. Right, that's right. So where are you heading? Uh, I'm heading or where are you going? The, the, um, a bit northern, uh, a, bit, a bit north. At, in okay. In the region called Abitibi. So Rouen Oranda, okay. okay. Amos, Val d'Or. That's a... Uh, it's about, uh, I would say, 400 kilometers north. Wow. Okay. I'm not sure. Not okay. Sure. I got to wow. check the headings uh, before I go, I go yeah. to sleep. So, yeah, I'm trying to, you know, visit this region because I've never been hmm. so mm -hmm. and then, then I'll just go back home slowly you know yeah okay some time for work on okay Monday. okay <laughs> so that's the plan okay by Monday so you got two days a couple hours plus two days yeah right. yeah and got a cool little setup is yeah. that a tent or what yeah it's a well you know I'm a hiker long okay. distance hiker oh so that's another thing I do so okay. that, that's uh, okay. my uh well, it's a American-made is it okay yeah from a company called zpax mm. in florida so they make a uh, ultralight tent mm. Mm -hmm. and other stuff for hikers mm -hmm. so yeah zpax you know they're starting to make some stuff like this with the 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 fabric is it it's not yeah. nylon it's a different type it's a of dyneema uh, they called it dyneema oh wow okay yeah so it's a uh, well very resistant for its weight yeah yeah and uh Completely waterproof. It almost looks like a sheepskin or something. Yeah, like it's a, uh, like animal. It's, it's a weird huh. uh, feeling, plastic feeling, I guess. Yeah, plasticky. And so this is your whole setup. This you just throw this down and put your AirPad underneath. Yeah, that's it. And I got a <laughs> quilt. Uh, you know. Okay, a quilt is nice. Yeah. I usually carry sleeping bags, but if I had my choice, I would go with the quilt. Yeah, I, li I like my setup, and I hike a lot, so I mean. It it's makes good. sense to invest because it's yep. not cheap, but yeah. So you hike a lot. Do you see a lot of bear? Well, I saw uh, two um, cubs, uh -huh. but it was way back Ooh. when I was uh, maybe ten years yeah, old. Yeah, so that's I'll... that's dangerous because you yeah. can't get in the way of the cubs. Yeah, well, we were in the scouts, <laughs> so you know they made sure the adults with us, and they made yeah. sure we yeah. stay away, safe, at a safe distance. Yeah, I guess I've I've seen a lot of uh, <laughs> orignos, orignos, uh, yes. Um, Oh, elk, moose, uh, moose, moose, yeah. moose. 
<laughs> and those are even more dangerous than bears, right? Well, they, they can't, yeah, it's, uh, they, they're impredictable. Uh, um, impredictable yes, right. So, you, you better stay away, but uh, we were pretty close, but it, nothing happens. Uh, wow. It, it's got bad sight, you know, but it's got a very good okay. sense of smell. Smell, so uh -huh. it smell, definitely smell us because we were stinking. Uh, <laughs> <for sure. laughs> I work uh, the motorcycle rally in Sturgis, South Dakota. Oh. That's yeah. coming up in about, I need to be there in a few weeks, but I go really slow. I take <laughs> yeah. my time no, and, for sure. you know. That's, what's, uh, that's, that's what's a the big hurry? deal. Yeah, what's that's the hurry? what's the hurry. Yeah, you got to enjoy sure. life. Yeah. Yeah. Joie de vie, right? La joie de vivre, yeah. La joie sure. de vie. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm sure you know about it, but sometimes things doesn't go according to plan. Yeah. But it, it still works out in the end. Absolutely. And that's, you know, that's part of um, the fun, I guess. The adventure. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And sometimes you have... That night, some asshole with an RV parked 10 feet away from me at 3.30 a.m. Eventually, I got back to sleep, and when I woke the next morning, I found Etienne getting packed and ready to ride further north into Quebec province. I packed up my camp and headed west into the province of Ontario. The wildfires had been exceptionally bad out there this year, and it sounded like I was in for one hell of an adventure. Hey, what's up? This is Joe. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that video of uh, exploring the province of Quebec. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. And uh, as usual, I've included an optional donate link in the Dropbox for anybody that might like to contribute to this project. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the road.